Today we're going to dismiss the nursery VBS in teens. So if you are in any of those groups, you are dismissed. Uh, I just want to remind anyone if they do have their cell phones with them, if you could just turn it off or put it on silent. We're going to be opening up uh, with the hymn. Uh, the hymn is... Everyone left. <laughs> is that later? Okay, sorry. I... So we're going to be starting off with a hymn. That hymn uh, is titled, Come... <laughs> sorry. Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. It's going to be the first verse and the last verse. You don't have to look for it because it will be on your... It is on our screen. So if you can... If Brian... Brian will take it from here. <laughs> Thank you. Remember to stay up. Take it from here. service with the word of prayer. Our great and holy and wonderful and wonderful, fantastic Father in heaven, we just thank you so much. This is three days so far we've been here worshiping and praising you, hearing messages and Eating, eating the spiritual food that you have prepared for us. We thank you so much for this. We know that you love us and you've prepared all of this for us. So we ask your presence here and your blessings upon this service. Please bless Brother John as he delivers the me message and as, as well, open our ears to receive it and our eyes and our, and our hearts to know that you have made this for us and for our benefit and for our growth. So we thank you. We love you, and we ask this all in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. So it's my pleasure to introduce Brother John Hasselden from Billinge, England. The topic of his sermon is Our Unchangeable Savior. Our Unchangeable Savior. Brother Hasselden. Well, good morning. morning. It's that time of year again. Are you ready? Smile. <laughs> I'll uh, look at last year's photo and see who's got older, <laughs> but also see who's got younger. And if you've got younger, well done to you. <laughs> How wonderful it is to be here once again. And I praise and thank the loving Lord 
for the welcome that we have received. Firstly, may I take this opportunity to thank once again the committee of CBC for inviting myself and Helen to give the opportunity to speak from God's word. I said to Helen when I got the invitation, Helen, we've got another invite to America. We must have done something right last year. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lydia can't be with us. If I had a pound for every person that said, where's Lydia? I'd be a rich man by now. She really wanted to be here, but work and holidays didn't allow it. So maybe one year, I will bring the whole congregation of Billings Christian Believers Fellowship yeah. with us. We have a great number of young ones, and I would love them to experience this wonderful conference. Last year was my first year, and I felt humbled to be a part of something that many great elders have been a part of in the past. I was totally uplifted, fully nourished, to listen to the different speakers, and I feel the same this year, so I thank you all once again. I send the love from all the brethren at Billings Christian Believers Fellowship. For those of you who don't know who we are, we are a small group of ranging of about 20 brothers and sisters in between a little, well, a little village in between Liverpool and Manchester. I'm sure you've all heard of those places. We range from the youngest being at the age of four right through the age range to the oldest being our brother Ronnie who celebrates his 80th birthday this year and he's still going strong. We have a blessed and full calendar of events since I was here last year and the younger ones of our church have been learning about God's plan from the beginning and the last time they met they looked into Daniel's image. Wow, I'm sure they could teach a few of us, a few things about it. And I would like to share two scriptures with you all this morning from all your brothers and sisters in Christ at Billinge. And I would like them to share, like you to share them with your respective classes when you meet with them again. They're from the Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Thessalonica. Reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, he says... We give thanks to God always for you all, making mentions of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labour of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. And then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, he says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is to meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity or the love of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. So they are from Billinge to you all. So once again, I thank you for welcoming myself and Helen to be part of a wonderful and blessed conference of like-minded brothers and sisters in Christ all sharing and wanting the same thing, and that is to be part of his bride when he returns very soon. Our unchangeable saviour. In the pursuit of godliness, the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. My brethren, in and through the one I want to speak about this morning, we can find that contentment. Could we all please open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews chapter 13? I would like our hearts and minds to be uplifted by one special verse this morning. Reading from verse 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Now I know, my brethren, there are divided minds into who wrote the book of Hebrews. This morning, I am always 
going to address these words from this verse to the Apostle Paul. If you don't agree, then you can take me outside later and stone me if you want. Or better still, we can discuss it later over a cup of tea. But I'm sorry, you won't change my mind. You will be aware of the fact that the final verses of most of the epistles of Paul and the other apostles deal with the matters of practice. The outworking of the gospel and also with rather personal matters. So usually you have a number of greetings, a farewell, a passing on of greetings from other Christians and other churches. You might be tempted to say therefore that in the final chapters of these epistles in the New Testament, you might expect subjects of rather lesser importance and lesser doctrinal significance. But that is certainly not the case. And with so many of the statements which are made here in the final chapter of the epistle to the Hebrews, above all, it is not true that the verse that I have chosen to open our hearts and minds on this morning is a matter of secondary importance. My, breth my brethren, listen to the words again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. It is very obvious that the Apostle Paul is trumpeting one of the central truths of the New Testament church, one of the greatest affirmations imaginable concerning the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. But why does Paul the Apostle put those words here in the book of Hebrews? Well, it seems to me that the Apostle is doing here is this. He is giving sort of a summary of everything he has said in this epistle up to this point. We talk sometimes about putting something in a nutshell. Well, here the apostle is putting the whole main thought of his, of his epistle in a nutshell. But what is the argument of the epistle to the Hebrews? Let me just take a moment to remind you. These Hebrew Christians were, of course, practicing early Jewish worship. It would be the custom, according to the Old Testament, to go to the temple and to take part in the Passover and Pentecost tabernacles. The worshipping of God by those Old Testament forms and sacrifices and offerings and the calendar dates and festivals of the Old Testament. Now, what, what had happened to them is obviously this. They had heard the gospel of Christ during their own lifetime, and they had become to that gospel. They were converted Hebrews, but then they had to suffer for their faith. They had lost their homes. They had lost their property. They had been put out. We had reference to that in the very chapter we have taken from this verse. The apostle said Christ himself was made to suffer outside the gate and outside the camp. And we must be as Christians who have turned to him for redemption and must be prepared to go suffer with him in the same kind of way. This, my brethren, had been a stumbling block to the Hebrew Christians. And they were tempted to go back to the ancient Hebrew religion. And so the great argument used by Paul is this. Christ, he says, is greater than anything that ever appeared before. He is greater than the angels. He is greater than the great man Moses. He is above all of the Old Testament, of the priests of the Old Testament in history. Jesus Christ came to bring an offer to God, a better sacrifice than the priest could ever offer in Old Testament times. He has come to confirm a better and eternal covenant by his own precious redeeming blood. He is the true eternal high priest. All the Old Testament priests but were temporary, 
Christ, he says, is the great everlasting priest, according to the will and the word of God. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Psalm 110 verse 4. So, brethren, you see, his argument really is this, that Christ is better than anything that's ever appeared in the Old Testament times. He is higher. He is greater. He is far superior, more effective, and more able to save than anything and anyone that has ever appeared before. So, my brethren, in our verse this morning, he is given an outline or a brief statement, suffering ev- summarizing everything he has said thus far, and he puts it in these memorable words: "Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever." So, my brethren, I want to spend a little time this morning opening up just a little on this passage just a little on this passage with you as it concerns the person of Jesus Christ and his glory and the first thing I want to draw to your attention is something very obvious that here in the person of Jesus Christ we have someone who is utterly different from everything or anyone we know here in this world I ask you is there anyone in your life or mine which are permanent? Friends, they come and go. Is there anything in your life which you can say is everlasting, that's unchanging, that is eternally the same? There's nothing that we know here in this present life. If we go back to the beginning of the Bible... To God when he created all things and when he finished the universe and he saw how beautiful it was and saw that it was very good and and he placed man in paradise. My brethren, you think with a sigh how different it is today. How different is the universe today? How different is this world that we live in today? Many countries we see on the news are scorched by the sun. Just look at the heat waves that we have been witnessing. Volcanoes, tidal waves, earthquakes, famines, wars. The paradise is gone. The world in which we live is a world of continuing change. But concerning Jesus Christ... He tells us he is not subject to change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Or could I give you another illustration? Take the great great civilizations of mankind. As the Bible itself presents them to us, the Bible tells us about these mighty nations and civilizations of old. One of the earliest we know about is Egypt. We are all familiar with the great pictures and photographs of the pyramids, of the Sphinx, and the great colossus statues of the pharaohs of old. Where are they now? Well, they are all crumbling and moulding away in the desert. The same is true of Babylon, with its hanging gardens and its great and impressive structures. Brethren, once a massive civilization, once a world empire, it has changed. What about Greece? What about Rome? Don't we always say that Greece was one of the greatest of all civilizations? Where is it now? The glory that was great. And as for the Roman Empire, it's gone. And so was the British Empire, my brethren. The British Empire... That used to cover the whole area of the world in such a way that they used to say that the sun always shone shone on some part of the British Empire. Believe me, my brethren, 
as a British citizen when I say it is not so today. We are in the United Kingdom. We in the United Kingdom are in a mess. Let us say the United has gone from the kingdom and the kingdom is no more. My brethren, we are living in a changing world, a world where civilization and nations are changing from day to day. Ah, yes, but says the Apostle Paul, there is one who does not change, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. This verse will be imprinted in your hearts and minds. Could I go on to remind you, brethren, that even the church doesn't stay the same. There have been great churches in the past. We are all familiar with the New Testament epistles, the epistle to the Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, Thessalonians, I could go on. Where are those great churches today? Where are the churches mentioned in the book of Revelation, Laodicea, Sardis, and so forth? They have gone. Their names have gone with them. They are not in the world today to any extent. If they exist at all, they are probably just tiny congregations. But my brethren, we are living in a changing world and the church itself is changing. Ah, but this says the Apostle Paul, I tell you one thing that is not changing. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Allow me to make one further point to illustrate what is being said. Dear brethren, I need hardly to tell you that you and I are changing from day to day. How could we be changed? This year, in April, I reached the milestone age of 50. What was that? <laughs> John, 50? You can't be. Really? Yes, it's true. <laughs> Honestly, the big 5-0 came. Now, April can be a very poignant time of year. And this year, perhaps more than any year, made me think about it more. Because brethren, it was in April 1978 that I lost my mum to cancer. At home, we have a small section of wall with some pictures on it. Our wedding day was on there, is on there. Bill and Olive are on there. The girls are on there. Matthew and Rebecca's wedding picture is on there. Even, don't know why, but the dogs past and present are on there. <laughs> oh, and if you remember last year, the Jack Russell that walked with me on my goal for 10,000 steps a day is still very much present. And I think Lydia will, will vouch for that especially because he's been non-stop barking since we've, been, since we've left. One of the photos is of my mum and dad on their wedding day. And as you look closer, you see a happy couple. Join with them on that picture, our both sets of parents on their happy day. However, my brethren, as I said, one passed away 45 years ago at the tender age of 42. The other one struggles to walk. He can hardly do anything for himself. It is then you start to realise this handsome couple once owned a home. They owned a home together where they had three children. One of them is present here. She is gone and he gets frustrated with everyday life. A child soon becomes a boy and then a man. And then his decline. A young girl quickly reaches her beauty of maidenhood. Then grey hairs come upon her. And a rotten disease finishes her life way too early. Oh my beloved brethren, let us not deceive ourselves. We are living in a world of change. 
and quoting from one of my favourite hymns, Change and Decay in All Around I See. O thou who changest not, abide with me. And who is that that changes not? Who? But only the person mentioned in our passage today, Jesus Christ, of whom it is said, is the same yesterday and today and forever. Secondly, in which Jesus Christ is the same, let me bring before you some of the riches of truth which lies in this verse. In what respects is Christ the same? You remember how Jesus Christ offended his hearers in the course of his ministry by reminding them again and again that he and is the Son of God. He called himself the Son of Man. He said to them, I and my Father are one, John 10 verse 30. And they took up stones to stone him. Our Lord proved that he was the Son of God by doing his miracles. He healed the sick at a word. He stilled the storm at a word. Jesus Christ at a word cast out devils. And at a word he raised the dead. Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. And concerning Christ... It, is, it has to be said, he is the everlasting son of the everlasting father, equal to his father in power and excellence and majesty and glory, equal to the creator of the world, because all things were created by him and for him. Now, brethren, when Paul says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, his relationship to his father is the same. He has the same authority with his father, the same standing with his father, the same dignity as his father, the same honour as his father, unchanged and unchanging. The great eternal son of God who came into this world and stooped to conquer mankind and the sin that was wrought in Adam from the very beginning is the one who took on human nature in order that he might bring us to become sons and daughters of God and have the chance to be with our majestic Heavenly Father just as Christ himself is at this moment in time. Now Christ is the same as ever and now is the mediator between the Father and his children. My brethren, we have one mediator, one Lord, one Saviour, now sat, on, sat at the right-hand side of God Almighty, enthroned in majesty and splendour. My brethren, he is the same, yesterday, today and forever. He is ever unchanging as the mediator between God and those who seek his guidance by having faith in him. You and I here this morning. I would like, if I could, to help those of you who are seeking the Lord at this time. Anyone whose faith is being tried and tested. And in so striving to help you, I would say this. Jesus Christ is the same, my beloved brethren. In his pity and in his compassion for men and women who are wanting him. He has not changed. His promises stand as sure today as they ever did. Did he ever say in his lifetime... Come unto me, and I will give you rest. His word is as good now, on this morning of Friday the 4th of August, as it was the very hour he spoke those words in the beginning of his earthly ministry. Did our, did our Lord Jesus Christ ever say, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out? These words are as good and as solid today as the day when he first uttered them. Jesus Christ, my brethren, is a friendly saviour. He will not frown upon you if you want him. If you desire him, you will find him, as kind to you as he was, kind to the persons who referred to him in the Gospels. How many times do you see men and women in the Gospels come into Christ? Women who dared to touch but the hem of his garment and receive comfort. Go in peace, 
thy faith has saved thee. Luke 7 verse 50. Men who came trembling, wanting his help, and went away always satisfied. Never in the gospel did anyone truly come to Christ with a sincere heart and go away empty-handed. And the same will be true for you and me, my brethren. For every seeker after mercy, every seeker after comfort and grace, the Lord Jesus Christ will be kind to the timid and kind to the meek and to the lowly who want him. And we know that to be the case because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me give you one further help under this general theme and say unto you, he is the same in his love for his own dear people. It is said in this very epistle to the Hebrews that he ever lives to make intercession for his people. It is said about him that he by one sacrifice has perfected forever them that come unto God by him. He is able to save the uttermost that come unto God by him. He does not offer oftentimes the same sacrifice. My brethren, he has finished the work. He has brought in the restoration Christ, by his death, has finished all that needs to be done to give peace to those people who have faith in him. Again, you and I here this morning. And that is why at the end of this chapter, the Apostle Paul writes these words. Verses 20 and 21, he says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. May you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. It is because God's love rests, God's love rests on Christ as the great high priest over the house of God. He is able, therefore, to give every believer sufficient grace. He is able to give you grace to live, and he will give you grace to die by. How do we know? Well, look at what happened to Stephen when he was being stoned to death. Bearing witness to the truth, he lifted up his eyes and saw the vision. And what was that vision? Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Acts 7 verse 56. The first Christian martyr and he will receive all of those who died in faith because they belong to the Lord. So my brethren, when the trumpet sounds, says the New Testament, and the dead are raised incorruptible, we shall be changed. And this mortal shall put on immortality. And this corruption shall put on incorruption. Shall put on incorruption. And we shall shine in glory. And our bodies shall be like the body of Christ. But how do we know all this? Well, because the word of God tells us. Christ is ever living and mediating on our behalf. Why? Because Christ is. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. My brethren, there is endless comfort in the great central truth of the Bible. You know, sometimes we are afraid for tomorrow. Many a parent, many a grandparent have used this language like this. We've all done it in the past. You've done it. I've done it. We say, what kind of world will our children grow up in? I fear for the next generation to come. And then, what sort of world will our grandchildren grow up in? Well, many things we do not know. But one thing we do know is that we, if we keep those children, if we keep those grandchildren rooted and grounded in the faith that they have, if we keep them enlightened by God's word, by God's plan and his purpose, they will grow in a world where Jesus Christ will be their king, 
where Jesus Christ will be their Lord and priest and prophet. But most importantly, Jesus Christ will be the best friend that they could ever have. He will teach the next generation as sure as he taught the previous generation. Jesus Christ has not lost his mighty power. He knows how to touch the hearts of men and women. He can touch the hearts of children as he touched the hearts of those great men and those great women that have gone before us. He can touch the hearts of our next generation because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. My brethren, he can do things far beyond any comprehension of yours and mine. But you say to me, Brother John, isn't this world getting darker? To which I will, let, I will say, let us despair if our passage that we have read this morning is not true. What Paul writes to the Hebrew church is as true as the word of God that Jesus Christ will be the same tomorrow as he was yesterday. He will be the same in the future as he was in the past. The same Lord, the same Saviour, the same mediator, the same friend for our children. How do we know, my brethren? Well, let the scriptures tell us. Let us look just a few. As we walk daily in the footsteps of Jesus, John 20, verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have yet believed. Matthew 18, verse 20. From where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting, have everlasting life. The Apostle Paul writes, Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things, yes, all things, my brethren, through Christ which strengtheneth me. Galatians 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the, night, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself from me. My brethren, there are so many in Scripture, but perhaps one of my favourite is what he said to his disciples. Matthew 28, verse 20, he says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. A closing promise transmitted to everyone who believes in him. A promise of his presence guaranteeing the success of the mission of the church to spread the gospel message. Because, my brethren, as our lead scripture says this morning, I am the same yesterday and today and forever. Our great and majestic saviour, our friend, our mediator, Jesus Christ. My dear brethren, let us not be unduly afraid for the things that we seem to be threatened by in our generation. It is after all very much our unbelief that leads us almost to the verge of despair. Well might Jesus Christ say to us as he said to the others, O ye of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? Where is your faith? My brethren, let us take hold of this passage of scripture. Let us take hold with both hands earnestly. Let us lay hold these words what Paul wrote down for us so long ago as the anchor of our hearts and minds. Jesus Christ, the same forever. He will not leave or forsake his people. He has done what he has promised to do. All nations shall be blessed in him, and all nations shall call him blessed from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. His name shall be great among the, among the heathen. But as I close this morning, may I make two applications. The first one is for any one of you or I 
anyone that you, and I, you or I may come across in this world, who are not professing Christians, don't they see everything in this world as a passing shadow? Don't they see the badness of living for the things of time and sense? What are the people doing in this world this morning? All over the country, all over the world, all over, the, all over America, all over England. In the Western world, they're probably shopping. Probably still, people are still in bed, glued to the television. But tomorrow, they will be back to the grind. It's over tomorrow. Everything is moving like a shadow. But there is only one thing which is secure, one thing which is solid, and that is the foundation that we are built on in Jesus Christ. The same forever is our hope and our faith and our assurance rooted in him. This brings me to the second application, and it is to all gathered here this morning. Make your profession of Christ that he is truly in your heart. Tell the world you are not ashamed to confess him amongst men and women in this present life because Jesus Christ will never forsake you. My brethren, have no fear. Fear nothing and fear no one. But make Jesus Christ your fear and dread because the only fear we have is the fear to displease him and not walk daily in his footsteps. Though this world can strip you of everything you've got, serve him and you will never be forsaken. His disciples in the days of his flesh took up their cross and followed the Lord until they themselves in some cases were also brought to the cross and to crucifixion. Did they die with tears and fears? No, not they, my brethren. They died the great death of great men. They knew that after their sleep in the grave, they knew where they were going. When Jesus returns, they are going to the place which they were informed about, the house of many mansions. Why would you want to go there? Because there they would see him face to face, for whom it is said, he is Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and forever. This is an unchangeable world of the great unchangeable Saviour. Our unchangeable Saviour, my brethren. So let us therefore take it upon ourselves to take comfort as we face the duties and privilege that we have as being part of of the glorious bride of Christ. And always remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. May God bless you all. Amen. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Most gracious, most loving Heavenly Father, we come once again before you in prayer. As Father, we thank you for our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the one we have spoke about this morning, the one that you sent from your side to give his life on the cross for the sin of all mankind. Father, we thank you for, your ministry, for his ministry. We thank you that you sent him and we thank you that he died on the cross. And Father, we wait with bated breath and in great anticipation for that glorious day of when he returns to receive us all as his bride. So until that day, Father, we ask you to keep us strong. Keep us all united along that narrow way that leads to all glory with you and your Son. And Father, we put the rest of this conference before you as we ask for many, many more blessings, along with the many blessings that we have received so far. So Father, we ask all these things in and through the one that very soon every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and always to thy praise, honour and glory. Amen.
Thank you, Brother John. We're going to take a short break, uh, but before we break, just uh, an announcement. If you haven't registered yet, please see uh, Sister Sherry Blake uh, so you can get registered. And also, if you haven't taken the time to sign the cards in the back, we encourage you to do so. Um, and that's it. We have about, about 10 minutes until we start our next uh, session. Thank you.